guys and welcome to World of Warships with Willy Boo. In this video we'll be talking about the tier 8 German cruiser, the Admiral Hippe. But before we do that I just want to remind you about the gift contest that I'm running that has to do with the Grand Naval Battles event this month on the EU server. And if you haven't done so yet I recommend that you check out the link that is popping up in the top right corner of the screen right now. And this will take you to a really short video where in the background you'll get to see how I get 14 Citadel hits in just under a minute in my Budionne cruiser. And you will also find out how to participate. you still got time till midnight tonight if you want to participate in this week's contest. It's really easy. All the details are in the video. So, let's move on to the Admiral Hipper replay just now, which I had just a couple of days ago. And again, I usually don't pick games which are monster games for any reason. I just pick the ones which, in my opinion, show uh, a good way of uh, handling a uh, situation in a game and just maximizing your contribution to the win of your team. So as you can see, this is a predominantly tier 8 game. We do have uh, carriers in the game as well. Uh, each team has got a tier 6 carrier, which... In the case of a tier 8 game, I again, I know from experience playing carriers myself, you won't be able to achieve all that much with a tier 6 carrier up against uh, tier 8 cruisers and battleships. Uh, they are just too strong for you most of the time, so I don't expect the carrier to have much of an impact on the game right now. A little bit of cinematics for you guys while we were waiting for the game to start. And now the bell rings off and uh, we're off to a start. So, I'm starting in the southwestern corner of the Land of Fire map and as you can see on the map right now I'm pointing out to my uh, division mate uh, the, the general direction in which I want to move and um, while we slowly get into position to move fight I just want to talk you through my way of thinking when sailing the hipper so first of all AP rounds you do not use anything else you know it very rarely you would see me choose an HE round for this ship they are not very good and um, the AP rounds are just so much better on this ship and uh, the general idea is that you have pretty decent range, you're not very fast, uh, you're quite maneuverable, you're, it's actually the sec second best maneuverable ship um, in this tier when, uh, when it comes to the Tenex circle. Uh, so uh, you can get yourself out of tight spots sometimes, you know, if you remember that. The only one that is better is the New Orleans. Um, so what else can I tell you? Uh, you want to play as a support and I'm looking at the map right now and I'm really realizing that this is not what I'm doing and I'm not listening to my own advice and uh, I will need to slow down a little bit right now and uh, basically you know, stop being the, the second ship or rather the first ship right after my destroyers in the game uh, because uh, this is not the way you want to sail your hipper. The hipper is well, you will not get too much fireworks out of it. This is a ship which with, with which you will be chipping away at the enemies. Uh, you may not even get a single kill in the whole game and yet end up being the first one on your team list simply because of the damage you deal. Uh, your main targets are enemy cruisers and battleships. In terms of battleships, you're aiming for the superstructure and you can get some devastating fire on them with your AP shells. And you will see some of that in the game here as well. So, uh, yeah, um, the torpedoes on the Hipper are a little bit better than Russian cruisers in the sense that they have a little bit more range and they have a slightly bigger potential to actually get some damage done. But let's get back to the game now. As you see, four and a half and just under 2,000 from the first salvo on the torpedoes. And like I said a second ago, this is the exact thing that you will be looking at. You want to, again, don't stay faithful to your targets. Start just aiming at the ones which give you the biggest chance of actually landing 
some damage and you are going to wither them down with your fire and basically make sure that uh, you take away as much health as possible out of them. Unfortunately the Turpets is rather well angled but he is my only target right now so I keep on shooting it but uh, as you saw right now I get quite a lot of bounces. And uh, I think this is the reason why people sometimes are a bit disappointed with the German line because especially with the Hipper because of you know slightly how to say that uneventful playstyle in this ship you know you you get to shoot a lot of shells and you know you you kind of get bounces because you are using AP shells so there is no splash damage there is no explosion damage so it it seems uneventful but you just have to persevere and um, you know keep at it and you will see that uh, the damage total damage over time in the game actually adds up and you will end up having a pretty decent damage damage rolls in this you know. So I switched to the other turpits and the second or the third salvo now gave me just over 7000 damage. I'm sort of hiding, slowing down behind this island here because um, I see this place as a good place to um, slow down and I do not want to go underneath that island. I don't want to go south and just you know sail to the east. And uh, sailing straight north right now was a little bit of a risk for me simply because as I said, I do want to play a support ship. I want to be, say, in the second line behind the first cruiser. Something like that. My uh, squad mate, uh, Surgical, is uh, in his Atago and he is playing the um, the spearhead here with the destroyers he is pushing in. And I'm just going to support him and uh, be right behind him. Uh, again, I'm using almost exclusively uh, AP shells on the... Uh, on the hipper and um, again I, out of those three hits right now I got um, some bounces but I also got uh, just under 2000 damage. So we find ourselves in a very peculiar position. Our battleships, the, just next to me the two turpits are shooting to the left which is okay I suppose but I think they would be much more useful if they concentrated on pushing in on the eastern side like uh, the rest of the team is and uh, basically just crashing the enemy. But that's fine, so I'm basically maneuvering here. I'm very mindful of that destroyer which is lurking up ahead of me right behind that island. And uh, I open up on the hipper here. He, he is angling but he occasionally does turn in and uh, present a nice broadside so that's what I'm waiting for and I'm hoping to score some hits on the German cruiser myself. And I do get a nice uh, citadel hit and I'm just a normal hit giving me 5900 damage. And this uh, is something that you, again, you have to kind of look forward to and count on when sailing the Hipper yourself. So, Mutski, uh, just under 5 kilometers away, I'm launching the tor those torpedoes just in case he decided to just go straight and torpedo me. I'm, I was hoping that I'm being spotted right now and I, I was kind of playing bait here, you know. I even slowed down right now just to give him a, a, an even more incentive to actually come here. But I look at the map now and I see that the Mutski has turned away so I just switch targets, speed up again and you know kind of play with my throttle here just to decide if I want to turn between those islands or not and uh, the salvo now gave me 1500 on the hipper again. Nothing spectacular as I warned you guys this is not the kind of a ship but all that damage does add up and in the end you will end up with a really nice average damage dealt. And I want you guys to notice just how tightly this ship can turn. Um, many other cruisers probably wouldn't have fit in to do this maneuver I'm doing right now. But the Hipper is really, really agile in that way, in the sense that, you know, the turning circle is quite tight. So, you know, it's quite doable to actually do this kind of stunts. And um, before I started this turn, I uh, used the Control X function to switch my guns to the left side, so they were already prepared to shoot at the Mutski the moment I cleared that island. And uh, I'm taking a stock of the, of the map as well, of the battle right now, and um, I'm looking at what I want to do. So I think that it's good to actually keep on attacking those uh, two battleships in the north. I want to clear the eastern side of the map of the enemies. Uh, you do get a... Uh, 3 hit salvo on the turpets giving me just under 2000 damage and uh, as you see I am switching you know I'm just using the fact that I've got a pretty decent reload rate and just wanna um, deal 
as many, you know, I want to launch as many shots as possible, and that gives me just under a 4,000 hit on the uh, Tirpitz now. I switch to the lower health Tirpitz again, uh, but he is angled, so I do not expect to deal all that much damage. Just uh, under a 1,000, which is alright. And that's the Tirpitz dead now. One more salvo on the other one, and I switch my attention to the Mogami, which is grinding against the... Uh, border map. I don't think he was doing this intentional, he was just standing around, so I'm not gonna hold it against him. And I um, prepare myself to shoot. I open up once and that's the moment the Mogami disappears, so I just kinda lead my camera to the left while I shoot. And I do actually get some hits on the Mogami, nothing spectacular, but I do deal some damage. Uh, but the Mogami is presenting a beautiful broadside to me right now, he's only 11 kilometers away and uh, just look at this. This is a perfect situation for the Hipper. Uh, that's how you decimate a ship in just one salvo. The AP damage is amazing on this ship. So that's the Emogami gone. We're left with the, the Tirpitz to the north. And I do remember that there was quite a big force moving in our cap right now. So I'm thinking, should I return to the cap or should I just support my team here and just make sure that this turret goes down as quickly as possible and I decide that you know we have quite a big uh, capping advantage already so in case they actually did get the cap I want to make sure that the turrets here up north uh, won't reset our capping efforts so I decide to engage him instead of uh, defending our own cap. And I see also see the friendly battleship moving in on the cap, so I'm thinking there is a pretty decent chance that the our cap situation will be under control, so um, yeah, I just decide to stay here. So I take aim, take the right lead. The Tirpitz is rather fast for a battleship, so I give it almost um, cruiser-like lead. And uh, I do get 5 hits and not a single one actually deals any damage, so yeah, again, this is something that you may have to deal with if you're sailing the hippo. The second salvo is a little bit more fortunate, it gives me 1500 of damage. But now I'm thinking, I just saw those torpedoes here right now, so I decide that this is my last salvo, I don't want to shoot anymore, those torpedoes should get rid of the hippo. Uh, so I want to just divert my attention to the situation that's unfolding in the south of the enemy cap right now. And I see the Pensacola moving in. And I'm thinking maybe I should just go straight ahead between those islands there and, um, and attack the Pensacola. But now I realize that this will actually expose me to the fire from the Nagata, which is moving straight behind the Pensacola. So what I want to do is now I want to switch my guns to the left, to the, sorry, to the right side. And I basically want to keep going for a while in this direction. And uh, the moment I decide that the Pensacola is going to be about, I don't know, 5 se 10 seconds away from clearing this island, I want to make a hard left turn, drop my speed, and open up from the Pensacola from close range. I'm expecting the Pensacola to be too busy engaging my squad mate right now, so I'm hoping to have a nice clear shot. And that's the Pensacola clearing this, and first shot of the lands of uh, Citadel, second one, another Citadel. Third, I'm using ripple fire here just to make sure that I won't waste any time engaging this ship. Another couple of hits, no citadels yet. Another two hits. And that's the Pensacola gone, and as you see, because I made that decision about maneuvering in a way, I'm completely shielded from the Nagato, there's no way the Nagato can get me. And I look at the map again, and it seems that the Nagato wants to commit to moving north, and I just want to repeat the exact same maneuver on the Nagato, so... There will be a twist though. I, what I want to do is, I want to gain some speed, and I want to keep going towards that uh, gap where the Nagato is heading, and... Um, I'm keeping my guns to my right side, because what I want to do is, I want to charge the Nagato's head-on, I want to turn left, so that will be south towards our cap, and uh, launch my torpedoes, because I feel that uh, using my guns on the Nagato would just take way too much time. So I'm in position right now, and um, the torpedo range on the Hipper is 6 kilometers, so I could be launching them even now, but I want to be sure that I get it, so I, I want to wait. And this is the moment where the Nagato gets a pretty big hit, and I'm not really sure who shot that, maybe the battleship to the south, 
Um, so I realized that maybe the torpedoes won't be necessary and uh, I just want to open up on the Nagato and I get uh, 2000 hit from those two shots I just gave. Dealing some damage but uh, again somebody else picks off the battleship for me which is completely fine. So you know I've been engaging quite a few enemies now and um, you know some of them are quite close range and if you notice I still managed to maintain the majority of my health by simply using the terrain to my advantage and I am trying to play the support role again so I, I, I want to make sure that there's always a better target the enemies have and uh, I want to uh, basically just chip away at their health and you know contribute to the win of the team that way so I look at the map again and uh, there are three ships left on the enemy team it looks like we may have actually won this um, there's no doubt here, I do not want to move north right now because I would expose myself to the fire from the Colorado and the Colorado is extremely deadly in uh, short ranges and this is only 8 kilometers. so I want to circle that island, let the Colorado get occupied with uh, the cruiser which is behind me and the destroyer which most likely will give enough uh, distraction to the battleship and I want to engage the Kutuzov which is only 5.3 uh, kilometers away and uh, basically I want to kill that ship there. He should be quite easy to sit at though. So you just heard me use my um, sonar consumable because I am very aware of the fact that the Kutuzov has got 8km range torpedoes and they may very well already be in the water if he was paying enough attention. So uh, that's why the, uh, the sonar is on and I just want to make sure that I have uh, plenty of warning. So I'm looking right now, just you know, going in and out of scope to make sure that um, I've already cleared the island for my forward guns. That's the torpedoes going out just now, but it seems that the Kutuzov has misjudged where to launch them and um, they, I'm gonna sail safely past them and I'm free to just have a nice Citadel Piñata experience on the Russian cruiser, that's the second Citadel right now. I'm clearing the island now, I wanna be able to use all of my guns. And you see me trying to find where the citadel is, I'm slightly shifting my aim to the right just to see how far I can take it to get citadel hits. That's something I recommend you doing, you know, if you know you've got a, sh uh, you've got a short kill and you're close enough to actually see where your shells land, do that, you know, test the enemies uh, in that way and just see where you can where you can score citadel hits. So I open up on the Colorado now, this is the last ship I will be engaging in this game and uh, as you saw I'm getting really good hits on this uh, tier 7 uh, battleship and that last salvo kills it off and uh, I decide to move in on the cap. I ask in the chat about the location of the remaining enemy ship which is the carrier but uh, I do not intend to really hunt it I just want to know where he is and in case he was anywhere near but um, like I said the intention here is to cap and uh, get some capping experience from it. So. I believe that this game, in this game I played a little bit more aggressive than I usually do in the Hipper, but that was mainly because of the fact that we managed to actually concentrate all of our forces in this one area, the, the, the island area of this map there in the eastern side. So that way I think I kind of could allow myself to actually get uh, myself more out there with the Hipper, which I firmly believe it's a support ship and you know it should be actually slightly further away in the second line behind the first cruiser in my opinion. And I think this is a really good uh, way of thinking in terms of how to steal the, the, the Hipper. You sort of keep, have to keep on asking yourself uh, this question, is there a better target my enemies have at this moment? And if you say no, if you if you look at the map and you see that you are most likely the closest one and you know the, you're being focused by the enemy fleet, this is the moment where you have to turn away, disengage for a moment, you know, wait those 20 seconds after the, the last time you shot and, you know, use your concealment to reposition yourself and just, you know, start chipping away and some, some other battleship or uh, uh, unsuspecting cruiser in a slightly different place in the map, you know, keep on asking yourself this question, am I being targeted, am I the best target for the enemy fleet, because that's how you survive the longest and uh, the longer you survive the more you, uh, damage you will be able to deal on uh, you know ships that have been engaging other enemies before 
as you saw, I didn't really pick a fight with anyone. I was just supporting my um, teammates in the game right now. Picking out the enemies which were already engaged, but at least one other friendly. And that's how I believe you should be selling the Hipper. Um, I'm sure that uh, that a more skilled player, um, someone who is skilled more than I am, would be able to carry a game in the Hipper. But for you know those average Joe captains uh, like uh, the majority of the players and me included, uh, I think this is quite a viable actually option for uh, selling the Hipper and you know progressing to the Ruin, which I hear is quite an excellent ship. And uh, I'm really looking forward to actually unlocking it. I'm still quite far, quite far away from it, but I think that this is a good way to actually progress rather painlessly. You know, you you have to think about that quite seriously, and you need, you need to pick your battles in a, in a good way. Finally, a little bit of cinematics for the end, and this is the moment where the timer finishes the game, and uh, that's us done. So, moving on to the final battle results screen. This game gave me 342,000 of profit and uh, just over 11,000 of experience, which obviously has to do with the premium camo that I was using and uh, probably some kind of a daily double. So don't be too envious. This is just a one, one off thing. 88 hits on target, 3 ships destroyed, and 10 citadels. And this, together with the fact that I managed to. Uh, Quite significantly help with capping the enemy cap uh, gave me 2200 of base experience in the first place in my team and the total damage dealt to count on the hipper is just as easy as it is on most battleships these days uh, you usually almost exclusively use um, ap shells and 95 hits gave me a hundred and nearly 112 of uh, damage dealt which is pretty decent for uh, for that cruiser Moving on to the profits, auto repair and refits weren't really that costly and that allowed me to end up having 282,000 of pure profit after all the refits and repairs. So that's pretty good as well. So guys, that will be all for this replay just now and uh, if you want to stick around and uh, listen about my consumable upgrade and uh, captain perk choices for this ship right now, then stick around because that's the next thing that's coming up. Okay guys, so we're in the port right now and let's start with the consumables first. So I used the premium consumable uh, for the repairs and uh, the other two are the, the standard the catapult fighter and the hydroacoustic surge. Obviously the defensive AA fire consumable is an option for you and uh, it will only depend uh, on how you want to play this ship and uh, of also the way you think how the population of uh, carried captains is in the game these days you know I, I feel that the population is slowly growing so I may be slowly switching to the AA consumable on my ships as well moving on to the upgrades I use the main battery modification one for the first slot for the second one I use the gunfire control system uh, the third one was the damage control system modification one. For the fourth one, I used the rudder shift time to make the ship a little bit a little bit more agile. And for the fifth one, the concealment system modification one was my choice. Moving on to the captain's perks, this captain is a little bit of a mess right now. I'm actually just waiting for payday so I can add some doubloons to my account, and I want to reshuffle these again. So what I think I will be keeping for now will be the uh, basics of survivability and also the incoming fire alert perk, something that I know is a bit controversial, but that's how I roll. So you don't have to copy me in that way. I do not need extra consumables, so I skip the superintendent on this ship, but I definitely want to use the vigilance, which helps me avoid torpedoes. And the extra points that I will have, uh, I will most likely use on the demolition expert for this ship. I, I'm hoping that this will make me more willing to use HE shells on enemy battleships because of the range of this ship and quite an accurate fire. This could be an option to you know, do some long range firing and you know, setting ships on fire. But for now, the, the HE shells are not that great. So maybe with that perk, I might actually uh, go for it. And uh, 
the last one, I think, again, I would use the Concealment Expert perk once I get 15 points on this captain, but it's still quite far away. That will leave me one, with one extra perk, and I may actually use it on the Situational Awareness, but on the other hand, if I will be using more HE shells, the Expert Loader perk would, would be quite a viable option as well, you know, just to juggle those um, uh, shells in a slightly more efficient way. So... Guys, I hope that you enjoyed watching this video, and uh, if you did, please do give this video a like down below. It helps the channel out immensely by motivating me to come up with uh, new content. And also think about uh, writing a suggestion in the comments section of this video if you'd like to see me sail a particular ship. If you struggle with something and you'd like to see my take on sailing a particular ship, just you know, write the request in the comments and I'll be happy to oblige you. And also, if you haven't seen it yet, I recommend you guys check out my latest Atago video, which I think is pretty cool as well. It shows you my uh, target ammo and uh, position choices for a game on the exact same map as I was sailing the Hipper in. And the link to this video should be popping up in the top right corner of the screen right now. And this is going to be all for this video, and uh, all I've got to say now is uh, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the open seas.